Hi, I am Laura Deal, author, speaker, grief mentor, uh, co-founder with my husband of GPS Hope, Grieving Parents Sharing Hope. And today I want to answer an email from Brooke about a struggle that she has been having. She says, hi, Laura, I'm going on 16 months without my son. I'm definitely not crying as much as I used to. I also changed jobs after 20 years, and I think that helped a lot too. I have a good support system, so I'm very lucky. The struggle that I have, and I'm not sure if this is normal, is that I don't cry like I used to because it literally exhausts me for the entire day. I stay really busy, so I'm not sure if I'm avoiding grief. Don't get me wrong, there's not a moment that goes by that I don't think about my son. I just don't feel sad like I did in those first few months. Obviously, holidays are hard. His first anniversary was hard. His birthday's coming up again. But as far as every day, I just don't cry. So I don't know if that's normal. I get on support sites and there are people who haven't gotten out of bed for a year or something to that effect. I just can't do that, so I stay busy. Is that okay? Or should I be grieving and crying more? I know, odd question, Brooke. And I, I love this question, Brooke. Thank you for sending it in and asking me. First of all, I want to say that I am really sorry that the message you have gotten from so many other grieving parents is one of hopelessness. And I, I talk to parents a lot who say that they try to find other bereaved parents and connect with other bereaved parents to give them hope that they can get out of this place of suffocating darkness and crying constantly. And, and it's so hard because so many parents, they don't get past it. And, and that's what they'll say. You'll never get out of this darkness. You'll never get past this. Your life will always be like this. Your life is over kind of a message. I know that was the message I started finding when my daughter Becca died. And I refused to believe that. I knew that Becca's death, my daughter's death, didn't blindside God. I knew that he didn't reach his limit in being able to help someone. He reached his limit with being able to help me out of my darkness. I knew that because uh, Jesus lives inside of me, the Holy Spirit is inside of me, that that meant that the seed of hope was inside of me and there had to be a way out of this darkness. And so if you are one of those who the message you keep getting from other parents is that it will always be dark it's just not true. And you don't have to choose to remain a victim of the circumstance that my child died. I know that's an identity that we pick up for quite a while. We even want to, I know I even wanted to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Laura Deal. My daughter died. It just became who I was for a while. And then I decided that's not who I am. That's not my identity. And so Brooke or anyone else who's listening, I want to tell you that you're in a good place. First of all, don't compare yourself to where you are in your grief to where someone else in their grief. There are a lot of reasons for that. One of them is because your relationship with your child is different than any other relationship anyone else have, has with or had with their child. Uh, your, the way your child died is different. Even if it was similar to another parent, it was still different. The exact circumstances were different. Your personality, we all have personalities that are different. We all deal with uh, heavy and difficult things differently. And so to compare where you are in, in your place of grief to where someone else is, another parent is in their place of grief, just really isn't, uh, it's, it's not advantageous. Now I know for me, I, I need it as a grid kind of, not, not to compare myself uh, to where I was in a sense, but I guess more like, is this normal? Is this okay? Is what I'm feeling or thinking or all this stuff that's happening to me or in me, is it normal? And so um, it's good to have a, a somewhat of a grid to find out if some of the things that you feel like you're losing your mind or like this situation, I feel like I'm not staying stuck there and is it too early for that? It's good to have a grid, but don't compare yourself. And, and I hope I'm making sense to you. We will get to a place. I believe that most of us, if not all of us, will get to a place where we find ourselves laughing again. Um, something amuses us. We find a smile uh, just kind of coming out of us. We're not crying every day. And we start to feel guilty. 
We feel like if I, I'm betraying my child, if I'm starting to learn how to live my life here without them, and I want to tell you, please don't feel guilty. You are not betraying your child by learning how to live again without them here. And a lot of parents will liken it to an amputation. The interesting thing is our daughter, when she was three years old, she had cancer. She had bone cancer. And she actually had her little left leg amputated at three years old and went through nine months of chemo. It happened that one of the chemo drugs they gave her caused heart damage, which eventually took her life from her at age 29. But we got to watch her grow up with an amputation with only one leg because her left leg had been cut off from her. And so I had a front row seat to this. And it is very much like an amputation. Children are part of our identity. They are part of our very being. And when our child dies, it is like a very part of our being has been cut off from us. And we need to figure out, we have to figure out how to live with that part of us missing. And so having this front row seat to watching my daughter uh, have your leg amputated, and learning how to live with that part of her missing, it was, it, there are so many comparisons that uh, have been so helpful to me and I've shared with others in this grief journey. But I just want to say here in this situation with this question and this struggle that it's okay to learn how to live your life again without your child being here with you. In fact, we need to. And like you said, Brooke, I didn't want to live in that place. I did not want to live in just a a shell of a person waiting to die. I knew I had other things to live for, other people to live for, my children, my husband. We had two grandchildren at the time. I didn't want to live. I begged God to just take me. I did not want to be here. And it's funny how it's so conflicting within yourself, and it doesn't even make sense to ourselves. We know we we should have plenty of reasons to stay here. And for some reason, we just don't want to. And it doesn't even make sense to us. But that's how most of us feel. And so moving beyond that and moving beyond that when you hear other people haven't at 16 months or 18 months or a year, whatever it is, uh, don't, don't be concerned about that. It's, it's okay to go ahead and move forward. It's okay that you're not crying every single day. There are still going to be plenty of days that you do cry. And there may even be probably, probably will be seasons. You may find yourself just back sucked under for a month. You may find yourself, you think you're really moving forward and things are getting better and you're starting to figure out how to live again with a life of meaning and purpose. It's, it's not in spite of your child's death. It's because of his or her life. We want to live for them. We want to keep their legacy going. Who else is going to keep their memory alive on this earth if we don't figure out how to live again and do that? It's okay to move forward in, in all of that. And like I said, you're, there'll be times though where something might trigger it, a date, an event, a smell, something you see, uh, something someone says, and you may find yourself just sucked right back under. For most of us, when that happens, as we go along, as we move forward in this journey that we're on, and it's definitely a journey, a lifelong journey, when we get sucked under, we find that we come up for air sooner and it maybe it doesn't uh, hurt as much and it doesn't hurt for as long. We're not in that place. And so just a, a fair warning, sometimes we feel like we're doing okay and then all of a sudden we feel like we've just been thrown backwards and we feel like you're right back at square one, but you're not, you're not. And I think sometimes those changes happen so small that the healing inside of us as we rest in God is is so tiny that we don't even realize the healing is taking place until all of a sudden we realize, oh, I'm not crying like every day like I used to, those kinds of things. So um, I hope this has been helpful to those of you who are watching. And I am Laura Deal, co-founder of GPS Hope, Grieving Parents Sharing Hope. It is a, a nonprofit. My husband and I live in a motorhome. We, we uh, minister and provide support and resources to parents across the nation. So if you are someone, you've been connected with GPS Hope for a while, and the things that we share have been helpful to you, the, the blogs, the videos like this, the, the podcasts, the weekly word of hope that gets sent out, 
If you have been helped by any of this, then I just want to encourage you to think about you can be a, a grieving parent sharing hope. We would really appreciate it if you would consider donating something to GPS Hope so that we can continue reaching out and providing resources and, and support for other grieving parents. So think about joining us, becoming a partner with us, and you becoming a grieving parent reaching out with hope, grieving parents sharing hope. Uh, just go to our website. There's a lot there on our website. If you're new to GPS Hope, check it out. It's gpshope.org. You'll find a lot of stuff there, all the things that I mentioned uh, just now and even more if you want to go there to possibly become part of what we're doing and give your own hope to other grieving parents then there's a donate tab there that you can you can uh, do that so we would appreciate it and wherever you are in this grief journey you're okay you're okay